Hey, what's up, guys? How's everybody doing today? Uh, oh, how's everybody doing today? I hope you guys all had a good day. Um, you know, I trade very, you know, I trade a very strategic trading plan, and uh, one of my trading plans is trading earnings. Um, I actually have a position on in Monsanto right now for earnings. Uh, we did some trades for Nike for earnings as well. Um, just as a show of hands of people in the room, did you guys make money today or did you lose money? Because I came in long the market but I'm stock specific and I made money today. So I'm pretty happy when I make money, everybody's lost money. That means you're probably, everybody's always uh, long the market here. In general, you know, most of the population is usually long the market, um, but there's always opportunity. I always say volatility creates opportunity. Um, so today I'm gonna talk about trading earnings using the HIM Cribbit trading plan. This is one of my proprietary trading plans that I came up with and uh, let's start over here. So my name is Andrew Keen. You guys have probably recognized me from CNBC, Bloomberg, Fox Business, Sky Australia. I have my own show on SIBO TV. Um, I am, you know, my number one trading philosophy is trading options. Uh, I've been trading options for over a decade. Um, I was on the floor trader on the CBOE for over 10 years. Now I moved upstairs just like you guys. I got two computers and seven monitors. Um, and I trade from upstairs. I always talk about it every single speech I give. This is the worst time ever for a market maker, like I used to be, and the best time ever for a retail trader. And you ask yourself, why is it the best time ever for a retail trader? Because I have can put on any position I want without giving away theoretical edge to you know, the market maker. When I was trading on the floor, for, from 2006 to 2009, I was the biggest independent Apple trader in the world. And if you wanted to trade Apple with me, this is when it was an $80 stock before iPad, iPhone, uh, you know, anything cool or innovative. It was an $80 stock. If you wanted to trade with me, my market on the option was a dollar to a dollar ten, 200 up. Now there's weekly options and there's penny wide options, which means for market maker, it's bad, but for a retail trader, it is good. So this is a great opportunity for you guys all to trade, to trade options. The liquidity has never, ever been bigger. The volumes are size. You can put on any position you want. Imagine going to Vegas, playing blackjack against the dealer and not giving him any edge, right? So this is the best time ever to trade options. Uh, I was a market maker in over 125 stocks. Uh, I actively trade futures for us, Forex stocks and commodities, but my bread and butter, which I always come back to, is trading equity options. Um, I've calculated roughly over the course of my 10 year, 11 year trading career, I've traded over a million equity options um, and over 40 million shares of stock. I think it's anywhere between 40 and 50 million shares of stock. And none of that is algo based. All the calculations are done in my head. I'm just trading all day long. You know, when you guys look for, you know, everybody's here to educate themselves, to learn, you know, to make money potentially in the future, right? So when you guys look for an educator or a trader that you guys like, you know, that you want to aspire to be, you want to learn from, I always say two simple things. Look for someone who's trading real money. I'm well, probably the most active trader you'll find out there. I watch the S&P 500 futures for probably 17 hours a day. So the last thing I do before I go to sleep is I look at the futures. When I get up at 6.37 a.m., it's the first thing I look at. So I'm actively trading all day long. Um, the equity option market is only open from 8.30 a.m. Central to 3, 3 to 3.15 p.m. Central. I wish it was open longer. I always talk to the CBOE, open it longer. I love trading. I trade all day long. So I would say look for someone who's... You can watch the trades very actively. You want to see someone active. Another thing I say, look for someone that can show you performance records, okay? We started a portfolio spreadsheet this year, and on a hypothetical $100,000 account, I'm up like $66,000. And we update it twice a day. We announce all my trades. I show all my fills. All my fills are real-time with real money. Um, so look for someone with performance, and look for someone who's actively trading. Um, you know, why, why learn how to trade options for someone who doesn't trade themselves. That's kind of my, my feel. I'm not a registered investment advisor, so I cannot give recommendations or advice. I can just tell you how I personally trade my own money. Okay, So I can just tell you how I personally trade my own money. So 
what are earnings, okay? Earnings are publicly traded companies release their earnings every single quarter. And I actually just came out with a book by Wiley. It's called Keen on the Market Trade to Win Unusual Option Activity, Volatility and Earnings. And I want you guys to write in the chat box and I will send a copy to whoever has the closest guess of how many publicly traded companies there are. Take a guess of how many publicly traded companies there are. Give it about two. Ooh. I'm gonna have to cut this off. <laughs> the first right an oh, the first right answer was 8,700, and I think that's exactly what it is. So there's 8,700 publicly traded companies, and I'll make sure that the first person that put 8,700 gets a book sent to them in the mail. And I think someone put exactly 8,700. So I'll make sure that email me at the end, and then uh, we'll send you a book in the mail. Second question for another book, <laughs> I'll send you an autographed copy of book in the mail. How many of these publicly traded companies have equity options. So how many publicly traded companies of the 8,700 can I trade options on? Ooh. I think it's around 3,200. So I'll look for the first right answer. It's 3,200, okay? So 8,700 stocks, 3,200 stocks with options. Then there's about 300 ETFs, okay? So I have choices of so many stocks. And why are we talking about earnings? We're talking about earnings today because on Tuesday, October 8th, Alcoa reports earnings. Alcoa is always the first Dow report, component to report earnings. So on Tuesday, we get the first look of earnings. Then they just fly on in. And actually earnings go year round you know there's a in the beginning you know there's a lot of earnings bank stocks have earnings in the beginning but then we have like a whole week of retail then we have a whole week of technology we always have google and then what we'll apple um so every company reports every quarter and then what happens right before they report earnings okay they are oh well, it's not even in the down anymore i thought they were the smallest component when they report earnings Implied volatility after the earnings event goes down a lot, okay? So I'm going to teach you guys strategies of how and what happens after earnings. So companies announce their earnings, revenues, guidance, how many iPads they sold or, you know, their guidance, their anything you want, top and bottom line, you know, and all their guidance every single quarter, okay? This is very important for a stock. If I gave you a research report, and I think I could probably give it to Jim Cramer. I could give Jim Cramer a research report and I could say to him, here's the research report. Tell me if the stock went up or down, okay? And to be honest, it doesn't matter what the research report says, okay? You can miss on your top line and your bottom line, but your guidance is good, so the stock goes up. You could beat on the top and the bottom, but your guidance is soft, so the stock goes down, okay? So it's really, really hard to distinguish what makes a good earnings quarter, right? Apple has had very fair earnings announcements in the last couple of, of not, uh, earnings announcements, and the stock has actually rallied. So if I gave you an earnings report and I said, hey, is this good or bad? You would have no idea. It doesn't really matter. It's just how the stock reacts, okay? So the only thing we're looking at here is how does the stock react? So we have top line, we have bottom lines, and then we have future guidance, okay? A lot of companies lately have been reporting uh, very soft on their revenues number, and they're beating on the bottom line. So their top line is revenue, their bottom line is earnings per share. So you'll see a lot of companies, revenue not being so good, but the bottom line's pretty good. And actually, historically, over the last couple of years, we've, most of the companies have rallied. Of the S&P stocks, about two-thirds of the stocks rally on earnings and do beat on earnings. If they're ranching it down so poorly, they're probably going to beat, right? And this is what's going to happen again this quarter. I think the ranch is down so poorly that a lot of these companies are going to beat and then rally on earnings. So earnings are an important factor in the stock's price. Because of this, earnings announcements are very closely watched and the stock can swing, okay? How many times does someone say, you know, one time Google actually reported uh, before their announcement and the stock sold off $50. I was in the pits in the trading floor and I saw, I saw Google move $100 on earnings, $100, that's insane, right? I had a, one of the times, and I always say that you're not a true trader to actually blow out an account, and I've done it, I think, twice so far, um, but I haven't done it in a late, at least about eight years. Uh, I had a huge, ginormous position on in Apple. 
Um, basically, I was long Apple, stock was trading $90. Um, I was short the 100 calls and I had those hedged uh, delta neutral and I was long the 80s. So basically I was just long the 80, 100 bull call spread. We'll call it that like a thousand times. Um, the stock rallied up to 100. I was up like 80,000. And it was the first time Apple ever sandbagged their number. So it got up to like 98, 80 or 99, 60. And since I was short that 100 line, I couldn't sell stock. And then the stock got crushed and went down to $80. And um, I lost over $100,000. And this was, you know, not a good time. Apple is my best stock I've ever traded. Um, for Apple, I've not made $1 million in one year. I've made $1 million just trading Apple in two separate years. Um, throughout the course of my trading career, I've made over $5.5 million, okay? So this is how I trade. Um, and this is everything that I took from the secrets of the trading floor that I'm teaching you guys today. So why trade earnings? Why do you want to trade earnings? Why is it important, okay? The wild swings in a stock's price around earnings creates opportunities for traders to profit, okay? These movements can expose a trader to a large amount of risk if they're not careful, okay? I always say, you know, I've never heard someone in the elevator go to me, go, you know, I, I'm in the best place in the world to trade. That's Chicago, okay? Traders Magazine voted Chicago the best place in the world to trade for six years. I'm in the heart and thick of things. You cannot walk around my office or to lunch without seeing a bunch of traders. I've never once been in an elevator where a trader said, I had the best day ever, the stock market didn't move. People don't talk like that, right? They always say, volatility creates opportunity. Traders want volatility. I want a day, I wish every single day, the market would go down 500 points, swing up 1,000, so up 500, and then go back to even, okay? Every single day, every single day I trade, I want volatility. Volatility creates opportunity, okay? If you can't make money when there's volatility, then you shouldn't be trading, right? But, so when we get earnings, we always get volatility. Volatility is always increased. Have any of you guys ever bought calls going into earnings? The stock has moved up in direction and you lost money? Can I get a show of anybody that's bought calls into earnings? Stock goes up and you lose money. Or you buy puts into earnings stock goes down and you lose money. And then what do you say to yourself? You say to yourself, man, these market makers are scamming me. I can't possibly make money. How can I buy calls, the stock goes up and I lose money? That doesn't make sense. Or how can I buy puts, the stock goes down and I lose money, okay? I'm gonna teach you that. I'm gonna teach you why implied volatility is very, very important among earnings. So we're going to have common rookie mistakes, okay? These are very, very important. This will be recorded, okay? But I want to teach you guys what you should avoid when you're trading earnings, okay? You're not in this webinar because, you're, you're you know, every trader is perfect, right? I make a lot of mistakes. I'm the first one to admit. I've blown out a trading account twice. It's not fun. I haven't done it in eight years. I will never, ever do it again. But let's talk about common rookie mistakes. Stocks gapping up or down, okay? If I'm short calls, in theory, that's the riskiest position because stocks can go up forever, okay? So shorting straddles into earnings, shorting strangles into earnings, shorting calls outright, shorting puts outright. And they always talk about what the, the difference between a good trader and a great trader. A good trader looks at how much money they're gonna make. A great trader looks at if I am wrong, how much can I lose, okay? I know personally, when I go to Las Vegas, whatever money I go with, I'm gambling till it's gone. That's not how I trade, and that's how no one should trade. But when I go to Vegas, if I bring $2,000, $3,000, $5,000, $5, I will gamble till it's gone. You guys got to get out of the, the mentality of that's, hey, I'm putting $20,000 in a trading account. I'm going to trade till it's gone. So stop looking at, if I'm right, how much can I make? Hypothetically, if I'm wrong, how much will I lose, okay? Drop in implied volatility. We just talked about this, okay? Implied volatility. We have two types of volatility we're going to go over today. We have historical volatility, and we have implied volatility. Historical volatility is how much it's moved in the past. Implied volatility is how much they are predicting in the future, okay? In front of any catalyst event, implied volatility will be very high. What are catalyst events? Drug announcements, mergers and acquisitions, 
and earnings, okay? Right before earnings, implied volatility will be very, very high, okay? And I'm gonna teach you strategies of how you can negate implied volatility, okay? Buying calls outright, buying puts outright might make you money, but you can take spreads to negate that implied volatility. So you guys have all said, hey, I bought calls, the stock went up, I lost money. I bought puts, the stock went down, I lost money. So I'm gonna teach you some strategies for the drop of implied volatility. High level of premium, okay? I've traded so many earnings before and I can look and see if the implied volatility is rich or is it cheap? Is this sometimes, do I wanna be the buyer of the implied volatility or do I wanna be a seller of implied volatility? Um, if you guys have been following me in most, uh, Monsanto, M-O-N, I had an iron butterfly on. I wanted to fade the movement. So not only can you take a trade directionally, you can also take a trade to just say, hey, you know what? I don't think the stock is gonna make a big move. I wanna make a bet on that, okay? But a risk versus reward setup. So on that case, we could do calendar spreads. We could do iron butterflies. We can do iron condors where I can sell implied volatility because I think the volatility is too high. Bad risk versus reward setups, okay? I always talk about this, and it's very, very simple, okay? The most I would ever, or the least I would ever get, get out of selling a spread is one-third of the spread. So on a dollar spread, I would never, ever sell it for less than 30 cents. On a $5 spread, I would never sell it for less than $1.50. Why is this, okay? There are so many iron condor strategies out there that guarantee a 90% winning rate. If you guys want a 90% winning rate, give me a million dollars. I will guarantee you, you'll win 90% of the time. I will not guarantee profitability, but I guarantee you'll win 90% of the time. That's why options have Delta. If I sell a $1 call spread for five cents, okay? If I sell a $1 bear call spread for five cents, I will make money on that spread 19 straight times the 20th time, I will blow out my account. That's because it has a five delta, a 5% chance of being in the money. So always make sure you have risk versus reward setups. I will talk to you guys about what are my favorite and least favorite strategies for earnings. Poor chart analysis, okay? When I was on the trading floor, I was a four tool baseball player, okay? You wanna be a five tool baseball player which means I had leaks in my game. For a long time, I never once looked at a chart, okay? I never looked at 52-week highs, 52-week lows, support, resistance, Fibonacci levels, uh, you know, Ichimoku Cloud is my favorite. Um, but now that I've moved upstairs, I need to start looking at charts a little bit more, okay? Is this chart strong? Is it weak? Do I think there's a better chance of it going up? Do I think there's a better going chance of going down? If it sells off, where will it find buyers? If it rallies, where will it find sellers, okay? They always say that if you make a trade based on the chart and you lose money, you're reading the chart wrong, okay? So get your chart analysis a little bit more in tune. I've been working on this personally for myself for the last year and a half because I knew my chart analysis was very, very poor. So let's talk about the, the most important thing when we trade earnings, okay? We have two types of volatility. We have historical volatility and we have implied volatility. To trade earnings successfully, okay, a trader has to understand the difference between historical and implied. And I'm here to teach this to you guys. Historical volati volatility, it measures realized fluctuation in a stock price. So historical, think of the past. We always know what happened in the past. It can help us predict the future, but it won't actually tell us exactly what the future is, okay? It will show if there's been a sharp move in price. And we can look at it calculated by looking at past price movements or changes, okay? So when I trade earnings, I look at the historical movement. How has the stock performed on earnings? I look at the last eight quarters, okay? I don't care if the company comes out with good top line, good bottom line, uh, good guidance. All I care is what the stock does on earnings. Does it go up or down, okay? I have so many different analogies from trading. One of my analogies 
is a is a sports team. Think of your favorite sports team, okay? Uh, we'll just call it, I'm in Chicago. The Cubs are terrible, and the Blackhawks are great, right? So if I'm in Chicago, historically, if I had to bet on the Blackhawks today, is there a better chance of them winning or losing? And the answer is not 50-50. Right now, the Blackhawks are a winning team. So there's a better chance that they win tonight. Okay, that's it. The Cubs are a losing team. There is a better chance that they lose tonight. Okay, is it chance that the Blackhawks lose a game? Sure, but historically, they are a winning team. Last year, they won the Stanley Cup. So historically, they've proven they can win. This is very similar to earnings. How does a stock perform on earnings? Historically, does it go up or down? So I look at the last eight quarters. If a stock historically sells off seven of eight quarters, I say there's a better chance that that stock sells off again on earnings. It has shown us that it performs poorly on earnings. Example, TXI, Texas, what is it called? Texas, not Texas Instruments. Industries, thank you. Texas Industries, okay? And we have a scanner that we can look at this, okay? And it's probably not going to allow me to pull it up, of course. So TXI, this had earnings. Historically, how does it move on earnings? It has sold off seven of eight quarters. So I think there's a better chance that it's going to sell off this quarter. Look at Alta, ULTA. There's a better chance it goes up or down on earnings. Well, it has rallied seven of eight quarters. So there's a better chance it goes up on earnings. A stock that sells off four times and rallies four times, that's like a 500 baseball team, right? Or 500, fo 500 football team. They win some, they lose some, okay? So the best setups is when historically, it always sells off. Or historically, it always rallies, okay? And I'm going to show you this, guys. And, uh, and this scanner that we work with, okay, it shows me, okay? I, I give it a little code here, and this shows me how it moves on earnings, okay? This is the date of the earnings, and it has rallied seven of eight quarters. When I see something as strong as this, Alta usually goes up on earnings. So I am only want to get look at a long position. We can look at something like TXI, the reported earnings yesterday. Look at here, one, two, three, four, five, six. This stock has sold off six of the last eight quarters. So there's a better chance they rally or sell off. There's a better chance that it sells off. And I can put this into my scanner for any stock. So I'm going to ask about Caterpillar. Um, let me look at Caterpillar. Caterpillar has rallied six of the last eight quarters. Okay. So in general, I'm going to want to get long Caterpillar on earnings. Okay. Then we look at the implied movement. What is implied volatility? Okay, it is an estimate of volatility in price. <clears throat> Events such as earnings, drug announcement, new product launches. Okay, volatility is always higher before that. Okay, so in stock like Alta and a stock like Caterpillar that rallies on earnings, does that mean I just want to buy calls? No, absolutely not, because the implied volatility. Okay, we always used to have. We would run our plots on the floor, and we would take our P&L if the volatility moved down. Because the volatility, I, it doesn't matter if a stock goes down $100. The volatility always comes down after earnings, okay? In general rules, it goes down about 20%, but volatility always decreases after earnings. That's why I guys teach you guys how you can negate this, how we can use a spread to get rid of some of that implied volatility risk. Picking stocks to trade for earnings, okay? What earnings do I want to play, okay? I want to play anything that is liquid and that I can put a position on. There was a stock today that had earnings. Uh, someone asked me about, I think it's IDT, and the markets were like a dollar wide, okay? I don't want to trade that. I want to trade stocks that have options, and the market is very wide and very, you know, very liquid. I don't want to trade... I don't want to trade wide markets, and I don't want to trade illiquid markets. I want to trade tight markets, and I want to trade liquid markets. So bank stocks, great. Apple, great. Google, great. Um, any stock you want, Netflix, Green Mountain Coffee, anything that has tight markets, 
and weekly options. And we're going to go over why weekly options are so important. My favorite earnings to play, popular, widely held stocks, okay? And a stock that shows me what they've done on earnings, okay? Show me that you've gone up six of eight quarters. Show me a strong chart, and we're going to go into my trading plan, okay? Show me a strong chart. Show me that you've rallied six of eight quarters, and yes, I'm willing to risk some capital on a bet, on a risk versus reward setup that the stock rallies. Show me that the chart is weak. Show me the stock has sold off six of eight quarters. Then I'll put on a bearish play. So strategies, okay? What are my favorite strategies, okay? Be mindful of commissions, okay? I always say commissions kill, okay? You don't want to chop yourself off in commission. There was a great example. Uh, there was some stock with earnings. I think it was Halliburton. And I bought uh, $1 call butterflies. Out of the money, call butterflies. And I bought it for 15 cents. A $1 out of the money call butterfly, okay, for 15 cents. So I was risking $15 per one lot. My potential reward was $85. So I was getting about 600% return if it moved right to my strike, to my measured move target. Well, it didn't. Not only did I lose money on the trade, I just chopped myself up in commissions. So when you're trading, be very mindful that butterflies on your condors can be very, very commission heavy, okay? If you're trading four legs of a spread, it's gonna be a little bit heavy in the commissions. That's why personally, I like to trade at higher dollar stocks, okay? <clears throat> if I trade a stock like Apple, you know, if I put a one lot call spread on, it's 500 bucks. If I do that in a stock that's $40, I'm gonna have to put on a 10 of them and that's 10 times the commission. So just keep an eye on commissions as well, guys. <clears throat> Remember that trading a vertical, you're charged twice as much, okay? If you trade a vertical spread, a call spread, a put spread, commissions will charge you twice. I always say that if you're with a broker who's charging you per trade, you should not be at the broker anymore, okay? So, you know, get a fair commission rate. There's nothing wrong with calling your, your broker and saying, hey, you know what? This isn't a fair rate. I want a better rate, okay? All they can say is no, okay? <clears throat> so if you're paying $9.95 a trade and you're trading two lots or 10 lots, you got to move your business, okay? If, if it's a retirement account, I would call your broker, tell them, say, hey, I do a lot of business. You know, say, hey, I'm going to move if you don't give me a better rate, okay? Commissions kill, guys. It's money in your pocket, okay? People are always concerned about buying lunch or buying drinks or something like that. But commissions are very, very important. It's part of trading. You have to take your total P&L after your commissions. So if your commissions are too high, there's no there's no reason you can't call your broker and say, hey, Johnny, Jimmy, Joe, can I can you lower my commissions? Is there anything you can do? I've been a very good customer. So keep an eye on that. If a retail trader is not mindful of their commissions, they can give away a lot of money. Okay. Like I said, your PL is after your commissions. Your PL is does not, you know, you don't say, hey, I made a thousand dollars. I have a thousand dollars worth of commissions. Well, I still made $1,000, though. No, 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 no. $1,000 you made, you have $1,000 commissions, you broke even, okay? It's like paying paying rent, you know? You have to pay it, right? So be mindful of these commissions because they do start adding up, and they get very, very costly, guys. They get very costly, okay? Types of strategies here. What strategies do I employ, okay? There are 29 basic option strategies. When I trade earnings... I will trade, and I have traded every single possible strategy, okay? I have traded straddle swaps, strangle swaps, uh, iron butterflies, broken wing butterflies, uh, just call and put spreads, iron condors, iron butterflies, calendar spreads, call calendar spreads, put calendar spreads. Um, I have sold strangles naked before and deep out of the money in uh, Apple in 2015 or something like that. Condors, okay? I implement every single strategy when I'm trading, okay? And how do I determine what is the best strategy? It's very, 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 very easy. I look at the historical movement, okay? Sometimes some stocks set up for better call or put fly candidates. Sometimes they don't set up as well, okay? Sometimes they set up well for iron condor candidates. Sometimes they set up for better for iron butterfly candidates. 
I'm just going to give you a little example here in a Monsanto, okay? If we look at Monsanto on earnings, and we just bring up our scanner again. So we look to see here, and on earnings, it was applying a 4% move, okay? If we look at Monsanto on earnings, the stock has not moved 4%. It's only moved more than 4% once. And they are, the market makers were implying a 4% move. So, and I also look, the last two quarters, it didn't move at all. And the couple before that, it only moved 2%. So when I look at this and I say, hmm, let's think about this. Historically, it's never, it's only moved once over 4% and they're implying a 4% move. What does that mean? That means I want to be a premium seller, okay? I looked at the chart. The chart looked pretty strong. So I'm not sure where the stock's going to go. So let's put on a strategy on a risk versus reward setup that I can make money if the stock doesn't move. The best thing about trading earnings, you can make money if the stock goes up parabolic on a 90 degree angle, on a 15 degree angle, flat, down 15 degrees, down 45, and down 90, okay? So I wanted to make a bet. I said, hey, you know what? I don't think Monsanto's gonna make a big move on earnings. It's only moved over 4% once. The chart looks strong, but not aggressively strong. So what did I do, okay? For Monsanto, I sold the 104 straddle, which means I sold the 104 calls. I also sold the 104 puts. And then I went out there and I bought the 101 puts and I bought the 107 calls. This is known as an iron butterfly. Might sound confusing, but it's really not that confusing. Basically, I thought Monsanto was not gonna move much and I thought if it did move, maybe it would sell off a little bit. So I sold the 104, 101 bull put spread. And then I also sold the 104, 107 bear call spread. On this trade, I got $2.15. It can only be worth $3. So my risk on this trade was 85. My reward was 215. I know this is a little bit complex strategy for some of you guys out there. We'll talk about an easier strategy here in a minute. So basically, I was getting three to one reward to risk, okay? Always set up these, re these setups as reward to risk, okay? How much, if I'm wrong, can I lose? And how much do I want to make? Very, very simple. I've made three to 600% on earnings. I mean, 20 to 50 times in the last year, okay? Using my strategy, using my him cribbit trading plan that I'm going to teach you. So these strategies will often offer a trader a much better reward to risk setup than calls or puts outright. You guys all said in the chat box, you've bought calls going in earnings. The stock has gone up, you've lost money. Well, if you did a spread instead, instead of just buying calls outright, if you bought a call spread, if you bought a call butterfly, okay, you would have ended up making money. Same thing to the downside. You've all said that you've bought puts before. The stock goes down, you lose money. How is that possible? So I'm going to teach you guys these spreads where you can negate some of the implied volatility. When you buy option, you are buying implied volatility. So if you're selling options, you're selling implied volatility. We all know after earnings, implied volatility goes lower. So what we want to do is we want to sell some of that implied volatility against the implied volatility that we're buying. Okay. Ooh. So I'm going to give you guys a little secret recipe. My grandmother was the biggest baker ever. She used to bake my grandfather a pie every single night for dinner. And my grandpa, he was a big guy. And he would eat three quarters of the pie himself. No joke. I used to remember when I was a little kid, my grandma would come. I'm actually from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. My grandma was from Milwaukee, so I didn't saw her maybe maybe once a quarter, you know, every about three to six times a year. And I was living in the suburbs of Chicago. My grandma would come over to my house and she would bake these cookies. And they were the best cookies I've ever had. Okay. They'd get them straight out of the oven. I'd get a glass of milk and I'd eat my cookies with my milk. And they were amazing. Okay. My grandma had the best recipe ever. Okay. They were amazing. I mean, she, she probably could have sold the recipe. Okay. 
So put this all together. What does this mean? Okay. I'm showing you guys the recipe. I like Lily, like Geneva. I'm showing you guys the recipe of how to put a trading plan in. Okay. My grandma used to make amazing cookies. I get so excited because I knew when she come over, she's bringing cookies with her. Okay. When I come to a webinar, I'm bringing you guys a trading plan that's actionable an actionable trading plan that you can take and implement yourself. So I'm teaching you guys the recipe here of how I've made millions of dollars on the trading floor, okay? So let's talk, ooh, there we go. Let's talk about the HIM Cribbit trading plan. Each one of these letters stands for something. You know, it's called an, uh, what's it called, an acronym? My acronym on the trading floor was AXK. Okay. They didn't have ARK, I'm, I'm Andrew Ross Keen, but everybody got named, got called by their badge. Okay. Well, I remember, what are the colors of the rainbow? Everybody remembers them. Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, whatever, G. Biv, blue, indigo, violet, right? So give yourself an acronym and just remember this, him cribbit. This is the steps that I look at every single earnings, okay? Number one, historical moving. How much has the stock moved on earnings and which direction has it moved on earnings? Does it historically go down? Does it historically go up? Percentage chance. What percent does it go down? What percent does it go up? I, implied volatility. How much are the market makers implying the stock is going to move? Okay. What is the implied volatility telling me? Okay. From being on the trading floor for so long, there are so many market maker tricks, secrets from the trading floor that no one knows how to do, okay? And that gets me to my M, my measured move target. There are always gonna be two measured move targets on earnings. There's gonna be an upside measure move target and a downside measure move target. How do you calculate measure move targets, okay? The market makers, Citadel, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, using the option chain they very, very easily show you how much the stock is gonna move on earnings. You just gotta figure out if it's gonna go up or down, right? How much are they implying the stock to move? Next thing, the chart, okay? If I see a stock that has rallied seven of eight quarters on earnings, then I see a weak chart, I might not put on a trade, okay? If I see a stock that has sold off seven of eight quarters and the chart is bullish, I might put, not put on a trade. As we talked about earlier, guys, 8,700 stocks, 3,200 stocks with options. There's always going to be opportunity. There's earnings almost every single day. Usually on Fridays, there's not earnings um, right now. But this week, I had opportunities in Monsanto. I had opportunities in TXI. Um, we had opportunities in Diamond Foods. So there's always going to be setups here guys you don't have to take every single trade so if the chart doesn't line up with how it's moved historically on earnings you know maybe i'll pass on that one maybe i'll put on a less risky position then i call it r and r you know it's not rest and relaxation here it's risk and reward what am i risking on this trade and what is my potential reward okay my favorite hands down strategy for earnings out of the money call and put butterflies using measured move targets, okay? Calculate the measured move target. I always set up my short strike on the measured move target, and I can get anywhere between four to 700% returns if it moves to my measured move target, okay? Do I wanna trade the weekly options or do I wanna trade the full month options? Great question. I always wanna trade the weekly options, okay? I wanna pinpoint the catalyst, okay? pinpoint the catalyst and to be done with the trade. I had the iron butterfly on in Monsanto, okay? If the next day was option expiration, I would have made 1000% of my trade, okay? It would have gone to zero and I sold it for $215 per one lot, okay? But I have a couple more days left. Monsanto, uh, I think it got downgraded this morning, it actually rallied today, might've got upgraded late in the day, okay? So the best trade set up for weekly options and earnings that are Thursday night or Friday morning because you just have one day, okay? So you have to look at your risk versus reward setup. Selling a $1 call spread for 10 cents is not a good risk versus reward setup. But buying a $2.5 call butterfly,
for 25 cents is an amazing trade if everything lines up. Risking $25 to potentially make $225, okay? That's 10 times your money. That's a 1,000% return, okay? Call and put butterflies on measure move targets is hands down my favorite strategy. What is my least favorite strategy? As we talked about, okay? Premium, buying implied volatility in front of earnings. Buying at the money straddles is hands down an unsuccessful strategy. You always think, hey, it's gonna move so much, okay? But the straddle price is already implying that. So buying at the money straddles is my hands down least favorite strategy. I will exit on earnings depends on the trade, okay? Then I wanna know my break evens, okay? Where on expiration is my break even, okay? It's important to know. Support levels, resistance levels, measured move targets, okay? Where can I break even on this trade? I've had, last month, I had great, unbelievable trades in DKS. <laughs> we were long out of the money put flies in DKS. On earnings, it moved right to my measure move target. I put a $3 put butterfly on for 35 cents. The next day, it moved right to my target. Only problem was, I had the next, the rest of the month for this trade to move around, okay? So trading full options aren't as good. Always trade the weekly options. If there's an option, not every stock has weekly options. Then I call it TNT. No, it's not tacos and tequila. It's time and target, okay? What is my time period? When do I think this is gonna happen? If there's weekly options, I always use them, okay? Always use the weekly option. The measure move targets work so much better. Target, where do I think it's gonna go? Based on the chart or based on my measure move target? It can be either or, okay? So we talked about these weekly options. So trading earnings. Nike, okay? Him Cribbit trading plan for Nike. We went over this, okay? Historical movement. Over the last eight quarters, Nike rallied five times and sold off three times. So think of that as a team that's in the thick of thing for making the playoffs, right? They're a pretty good team. They're, they haven't won eight games in a row, but it's rallied five times, sold off three times, okay? So right now, I initially think in my head, they always say GTH, gun to head. Gun to head, I would get long the stock just based on this statistic, okay? It's rallied five of eight quarters. The average earnings day move was 5.2% in Nike. That shows me historically how much it's moved and how, how many times it's rallied. Implied movement, the option market is implying a 5% move. Wow, it's amazing how it works. Usually moves 5.2, the market's implying a 5% move. Once we get this, okay, next step after H and after I is measured move target. What are our measure move targets? So we had two measure move targets trading Nike for earnings. We had an upside measure move target, 73.54. We had a downside measure move target of 65.66. So using the him cribbit trading plan, do we think the stock's gonna go up to 73 and a half or down to 65.60, okay? Well, we, have, but we said that it's rallied five of eight quarters. What do we have to look at now? Well, we have to look at the chart, okay? How does the chart look? If the chart is bullish and historically the stock has rallied on earnings, that's gonna want me to put on a bullish trade. If the chart is bearish and the stock has sold off on earnings historically, that's gonna want me to put on a bearish trade. So we look at Nike here and we use our favorite indicator, the Ichimoku cloud, okay? This is my favorite hands down bar none indicator. It is very useful for trading earnings for a couple of reasons. It identifies the overall trend. Ichimoku Kinkin Hoi is the full name. Ichimoku means at first glance. Kinko means balance and Hoi means bar chart. So it shows us right off the bat, we don't even have to think, is this chart bullish or bearish? Does this stock have a better chance of going up or does it have going down, okay? 
a coin is 50 50. if you flip a coin 100 times and it lands heads 80 times what's the percentage chance it's heads next time it's still 50 50. however trading stocks is not sports teams are not okay how is the stock market performing right now over the course since president obama took office historically it's always gone up every pullback bit has been bought period there was levels in 2007 2008 where every rally was sold however right now all the rallies get bought can't fight the fed they have more money than you that's my quote for tv uh, so confirmation of the trend over multiple periods okay ichimoku cloud works best on a daily chart but we can also look at a weekly and monthly for possible resistance to the upside spotting key support and resistant levels are very important as well and we rule out the weaker settings right we talk about this okay the historical movement has to line up with the chart okay if the historical movement has rallied seven quarters out of eight and the chart is bearish and the stock is on a 52 week low i most likely won't take a trade okay there's always going to be an opportunity to take another trade okay these people always i get emails and people saying oh i missed your trade in vvus today great trade i missed your trade in camp today they 100 percent profit overnight don't sweat it there's another day there's 252 trading days in a year okay there'll be other opportunities out there okay so we can rule out the weak settings and just put on the best possible setups here okay and then let's look at nike nike daily chart okay how do you guys think does this chart look bullish or does it look bearish okay does this chart look like it's going higher does the chart look like it's going lower it's bullish right bullish we want from the bottom left to the top right okay goes up Anytime it gets sold off, it rallies, right? Sold off here, rally. Sold off here, rally. Sold off here, rally, okay? This chart is extremely bullish, okay? It actually hasn't closed under the Ichimoku cloud once since 2013, okay? Perfect straight line, okay? We like charts, if we're bullish, that goes from the bottom left to the top right. This is very bullish on the daily, okay? Well, we know it's bullish on the daily, but let's go into the weekly now okay let's use a different time interval weekly i mean this chart couldn't get any better look at this from the bottom left to the top right we could draw a channel in here we could draw a straight bull channel okay 52 week high on the weekly chart we see the future ichimoku cloud out and up trading above the 9 and 26 above the lagging indicator this stock has has room to run so there's no possible way knowing that the stock has rallied five of eight quarters and knowing that this chart is bullish on the daily or the weekly, I would ever put on a bearish setup, okay? Market psychology actually has people that always wanna call the top, okay? People wanna be shorting Tesla because they wanna call and say, hey, I was the one that got short Tesla at 190, or I was the one that got short Apple at $704, or I bought Bank of America at a dollar, right? I play a lot of poker, and you always wanna call that guy that you think is bluffing he bluffs you, you feel great, right? But that's not the proper way to trade. As stocks go higher, you should be buying them. As stocks go lower, you should be selling them. I always say, I want to buy strong stocks on pullbacks, and I want to sell weak stocks on rallies, okay? So the Ichimoku cloud helps us with this, right? It helps us with the trend, showing us which way it moves. We can pull up one more monthly chart. I mean, the stock used to be 10 bucks in 1998. The stock was 10 bucks. In 2009, Nike got down to $20. Okay, it's just gone straight up. Daily, weekly, monthly, straight, straight up. Okay, let's go to the Him Cribba trading plan. Now that we know the stock has rallied five of eight quarters, we know the implied movement. It's either implying the stock's going to go to 7350 or 6650. Okay. With the chart showing Nike is in a clear bull channel and other steps pointing straight up, we can put on a risk versus reward setup. So in Nike, this was just last week, guys. I'm not showing you guys examples from 2006, 2004, 2011. I show examples that happened within the last week, okay? This is real-time money, real trades. So in Nike, 
we were implying that the stock could move to 73 and a half. So I wanted to short the 73 and a half line. So the trade setup was Nike, September 27th, weekly, 72 and a half, 73 and a half, bull call spread for 25 cents. Risk on this trade, $25 per one lot. Okay. I know how much I can lose. If Nike for some reason rolls over and goes to 66 and a half, I know how much I can lose. Okay. But we think it's going higher, and the chart is showing us it's going higher, and our measure move target to 73 and a half. Perfect. Okay. So set up here, you buy an out of the money call spread. Pay $25. Risk $25 per one lot. Reward. $75 per one lot. You would say, Andrew, this is a dollar call spread. Shouldn't my reward be $1? Well, yes, your reward is $1, but you pay 25 cents for it, okay? So I'm risking 25 to make 75. How does that set up on a reward to risk setup? Great, giving me three to one on my money, okay? Also, break even point, 72.75, okay? Where was our measure move target? 73 and a half. So yes, I think it can go past that 72.75. This trade netted 300% overnight on a limited risk, limited reward setup. The stock was trading at um, $70 at the time. Was Nike $70 at the time? 69.40 before earnings? 69.40? 70 bucks. So it's trading 70 bucks. Okay. So we bought this call spread. Okay. And it went to one dollar. So we netted 300% return overnight on this trade. Okay, this trade works perfectly in our plan. Limited risk, limited reward. As you can see here, it sets up a three-to-one reward-to-risk setup. Historical movement, implied movement, chart, risk, reward, break-even, time and target. Boom. Okay. So three-to-one reward-to-risk setup. Okay, always want to trade the weekly options if there is some. A lot of times I've been passing, but there's no weekly options, okay? It went to like, it closed that day at 73.70, okay? So the market makers were exactly right. They moved exactly where they thought it was going to move. So the stock gapped higher. I think it gapped to 74.5. It, it went back down to about 73.70, okay? So always pick the targets before making the trade. Okay, always have an exit plan. Okay, the way I trade call and put butterflies that are out of the money, usually I take off half at a double and then I leave the other half to expiration. Measured move targets. Once we know the implied move in a stock, we can use it to calculate where the stock is going to go. Okay, let's say we know a straddle price. Where is it going to go? Okay, if the straddle is a dollar, it's going to either go up or down $1. So how are our measure move targets calculated? Okay, We can take the straddle price and we can add it to the stock's price. So let's say XYZ is trading $13. XYZ is trading $13. The straddle is $1. Well, now we have two measure move targets. We take the strike price plus the straddle price is $14. And we take the strike price minus the straddle price. That's just how we got it in Nike. We just took that straddle price and we added it to the strike the straddle price stock the stock price sorry the strike price plus the straddle price and then minus the straddle price so let's talk about the him cribbit here in depth and if you guys have any questions i'll be more than willing to ask questions here historical movement okay and we actually is actually a little bit of an older slide we used to do four quarters and then we moved it to eight quarters okay so historical movement how does the stock move over the last eight quarters okay stocks have memories right they always test certain levels to see if they want to go there or not so how does the stock perform does it go up on earnings or is it to go down on earnings implied movement how much is the current options implying what are the market makers the citadel goldman sachs morgan stanley merrill lynch how much are they implying the stock can move for earnings Measured move target, okay? Two measured move targets. There's always going to be an upside measure move target, and there's always going to be a downside measure move target. 
upside measure move target and a downside measure move target. Chart, bullish, bearish, or neutral, okay? Does the daily chart look like the stock's gonna take off? Does it look pretty flat? How does a weekly? How does a monthly? Support and resistance as well. Risk, how much of my total book I'm willing to risk, okay? All my earnings trades are different. Um, I would say on average, I risk between $400 to $4,000 on every earnings trade. Um, just depends on the setup, okay? And a stock that's rallied eight quarters in a row and the chart is bullish, I'm gonna risk more on my, you know, a bullish setup. If it's rallied five of eight quarters and the chart looks bullish, maybe I'll risk, you know, a couple thousand dollars. So every single trade is different. Reward, okay? The key to trading earnings is not being right or wrong. And I'll show you a portfolio of spreadsheet of why. It's taking good reward to risk setups, okay? It's taking good reward to risk setups. The Nike risk was $25 per one lot. Risking 25 to make 75. It's great, okay? Break even. Always know my break evens, okay? If they're not looking good, maybe I wanna take the trade off, okay? Time period, what is the best time? Weekly options are obviously the best. If we don't do weeklies, full months are not as good, but they're fine, okay? Target, okay? Where do I think it can go? In Nike, we had that measure move target. It has moved 5% on earnings, on average. We thought it moved 5%. We thought it moved to the upside. I got a 300% return on that trade. Okay, the most important thing is always your risk. When you're trading, okay, I've made a living, a very successful multi-million dollar living trading in my life. 5.5, trading in my life, okay? I feel it's almost my obligation, my duty to teach you guys proper risk versus reward setups, okay? So you gotta make sure you're setting up a proper risk versus reward setups. Earnings seasons are here, so buckle up guys. I just wanna show you one quick thing, okay? We've published these and these are just been for the last two months, okay? These are all the earnings trades we've published, okay? We've taken 16 earnings trades here from August 9th to October 2nd, so about two months, 16 earnings trades. Nine winners, seven losers, okay? And you say to yourself, that's not very good. You've only had nine winners and seven losers, but if you look at the times we made money, okay? Tripled our money, doubled our money, quadrupled our money. If a trader took every single one of these 16 trades, okay, and risked $1,000 per trade, they would be net up $8,000, okay? The reason is we set up our trades on a reward to risk basis, okay? I'm never gonna sell a 20 cent bear call spread in the earnings, sorry, a dollar bear call spread in the earnings for 20 cents. Because that means I'm risking 80 to make 20. I wanna have odds, probability, and math in my side. So I always wanna make sure my reward is two, three, Sometimes potentially I can get 600% returns on my trade. Right now I have a trade in uh, in Monsanto where I'm up about 80%. The Nike trade was good for 300%, okay? So I always wanna make sure that I have proper reward to risk setup. As we said, earnings starts next Tuesday with Alcoa, which now I am informed it is not in the Dow. Thank you guys. And <laughs> so we're gonna have a slew of earnings next week. So buckle up because earnings are here and they're gonna come fast. So next Tuesday night, okay, at eight o'clock or seven o'clock, we're gonna teach you guys high probability, low risk trades for earnings, okay? Trade targets that prof the professionals don't talk about. We're gonna show you, and I'm gonna go over strategies. What is the best time to put on butterflies, condors, straddle swaps? I will show you guys why straddles are not a good philosophy. I'll show you call and put butterflies, when they work best. When do call and spread, put spreads work best? When do iron condors work best? When do iron butterflies work best, okay? So the seven step trading plan for taking every single trade. 